Hello everybody, my name is Pancakes and welcome to a brand new episode of Media Buffet. Today I am joined by Dragon and a rare occurrence, Travi. How are things going with y'all? Oh, this is going great. Yeah, yeah. Everything's been pretty everything's been pretty fine. <sighs> That's great. So today we will be discussing a topic that we've been dying quite literally to discuss in this uh, in this everlasting podcast something that each and every one of us have tremendous passion for and that is the FNAF VHS tapes originally mm-hmm. created by Squimpus McGrimpus okay so mm. overall before we get into the individual tapes question what were your expectations for both of you for this series like given it's an analog horror based on the popular franchise like what were you expecting before you actually watched them i mean regarding the entire in the entirety of FNAF, like fnaf itself i wasn't expecting it to be like that gory per se like i watched right, the first right. couple of it uh like first video on it and i wasn't expecting freddy to just have a bunch of stuff in him right, well dragon right. that's basically the entire story of fnaf so yeah, <laughs> yeah i don't know what yeah, to tell but you the thing is that usually like fnaf nowadays is seen as a like a whole meme you know it's just yeah it's barely scary nowadays but you know but with the vhs like they bring back that that horror they bring back and, the uh, sensation of Wow, this guy killed and stuffed a bunch of people inside uh, inside the animatronics. Right, right. Bring that, bring that back. It's yeah, something yeah. Unique. Honestly, all tragedies aside, that's what I really like about these tapes. The overall, the aesthetic of these tapes brings back that horror element to the franchise, even though it's not official FNAF material, it is fan made. It actually brings back that horror aspect and we actually get reminded at face value every episode what we're watching or say uh, the circumstances behind what we're watching or say uh, it's not it's not like the movie it's not ooh we're going into this strange old pizzeria with mysteriously stinky animatronics no there's kids in the suits right and we right. get that shown to us every episode every episode it's yeah the central it's the central uh point that the plot revolves around which FNAF yeah. technically also revolves around that but yeah so uh without further ado now we give our initial thoughts let's get started the way that this works is that we're going to do a per episode discussion we're going to give our thoughts and i'm pulling this information all the information for the episodes from the FNAF vhs wiki from fandom.com thanks to you Thanks to fandom.com for providing the information. It's basically the brief explanation for every episode. So, the main series of tapes has two seasons. There's season one and two. Season one has five tapes and season two has seven, for a total of 12. There's also a series of non-canon tapes, but we'll only be discussing the main series of tapes. So, the non-canon tapes, we're not going to be discussing those today. Those include Father, Sad Girl, Balloon Boy, Birthday Boy, Bonnie, and Power Outage. The rest of the tapes, we'll be covering. So, the first tape that we'll be discussing, that Dragon mentioned, is the first tape in the in Season 1. Season 1, Episode 1, Fast Bear Entertainment Video Manual, was released July 25th, 2019. And... As I said, it's the first episode. The plot is as follows. Also, fair warning. Uh, obviously, spoilers for those of you who haven't watched the tapes. Go watch them. They're really good. Mm. Uh, and yeah, there's gore. Lots of gore and violence. So if I you're mean, it's turned off by that, click away. Like, go watch Happy Tree Friends or something. I don't care. So <laughs> the, plot of the, the plot of the first episode is basically like a video manual for Fazbear employees uh, on how to remove the 
the animatronic parts from the skeletons so as to clean them and stuff. Basically daily maintenance. Hence the name, Fastbear Entertainment Video Manual. Basically, the tape opens by explaining the process of cleaning an animatronic. And as the video progresses, it explains how to remove the specific parts. And it uses Freddy, in this case, FNAF 2 Freddy, unwithered, completely original, as the example. And the narrator says that all animatronics use that procedure. It says to remove the upper jaw, lower jaw, arms, and then torso piece in that order. It slowly explains, hey, you got to press this button to remove this part and so on, on until it gets to the torso. When it gets to the torso, the little music jingle that's playing in the background comes to a complete halt. And we see Hetty, Hetty, we see Freddy hunched over in a different pose, a black censorship box covering his entire tor torso area and what seems to be blood splattered over different parts of Freddy's body. Presumably, someone stuffed human remains inside that suit. And, yeah, like I said, blood is visible on the endoskeleton and the lower legs. The narrator continues explaining it like it's nothing. However, it changes tone immediately when the narrator says, climb inside the torso and accept your death. It's even more creepy when you consider that as soon as he says accept your death, the narrator changes his tone, the lights turn off, and Freddy's eyes begin to flicker on. And the tape ends right then and there. This sets the Ooh. tone. As I said, it's the first episode. It sets the tone for what is the series. A really creepy take on presumably daily Freddy Fazbear's <laughs> operation. So yeah. Pretty good episode, I'd say. What do you think? Yeah. Dragon? Oh, yeah, yeah, Crazy. definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, definitely. Well, uh -huh. Pretty well, much yeah, like you well, said, you know, it sets the tone for... I'm, I'm sorry, Dragon. Uh, no, don't know. worry about it. Don't worry about it. You keep right. continuing. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, like you said, uh, it definitely sets the tone and it's... And it does a great job at it. And that's why I really, really like this series, you know. Um, just watching these... these these tapes again i was just like thinking to myself man this All right. this is what uh see, seeing the vhs tapes again and you know i'm just thinking like this is what fnaf should be you know and, and it eventually is but you know with, with the whole you know with, with people just doing memes and jokes around it you know it takes away the 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 series tone from it but restoring fnaf back back to its glory in these tapes and specifically, you know, as an analog horror, which I've been getting into lately, is crazy. You know, it's, it's really, really well made. It's great. Really, really good. And uh, it definitely had me wanting more to, to you know. Yeah, pretty much. Sure. Yeah, it pretty much uh, made me want more from from other episodes and see what what else is gonna what else is gonna rise from the uh, from the series. Well, regarding the. Uh... Well, yeah, don't mind don't mind me. I'm just gonna say my part. Uh regarding yeah, yeah. the video itself, I'm gonna be honest with you, it looks like a genuinely decent like something I would follow if I if I would be working there. But the fact that it, it gets creepier throughout the video and how it shows at the end the fact that something used to be inside Freddy sets a tone where I'm creeped out. Right. And I'm honestly a really fan of it. That's basically well, all I gotta say. I wouldn't say used to be inside Freddy, because given we're talking about FNAF, if, for those of you who don't know, the killer stuffed the kids inside the suits, five kids. So, yeah, I would say that that's. They're taking that video when there's a kid in the suit, when there's human remains. And obviously, right. because it's YouTube. The creator probably censored that with that in mind. Plus, not everyone, including horror enthusiasts, would like to see infant remains, like just without warning. So, yeah, there's yeah, that. And also, uh, like, what, what what I would like to what I would like to add is, you know, what I what I like a lot about this series is 
it barely has any jump scares yet it still sets the, the the horror it's still unsettling and i feel like that's that's just the greatest part and with this video there were no any jump scares i mean there was like this this quick jump to uh oh just just another you know manual then boom i don't know corpse inside inside freddy and it's like whoa whoa oh, oh, okay and, it's you know, like yeah, a, it's very yeah. unsettling and there's then again there's no sort of jump scare there's there's nothing yet it still sets you up for something and yeah, this series uh, is not this yeah mm -hmm. Continue. no i mean that that's pretty much about it <laughs> all right all right i'd say that's a pretty common theme with all these episodes because a lot of these tapes quote unquote tapes are basically that instruction manuals and yeah we'll get on we'll get onto what happens in these instruction manuals later on when we talk about more episodes but yeah that's basically the first episode of Master Entertainment video man now we'll be on to the next entry on season one hold on uh my phone is not working Bonnie's What's joint movement video? testing is it yep Bonnie joint movement test. Yep. Episode two of season one is Bonnie joint movement testing, released on the same day. I'm pretty sure. Oh, was it? July 25th. Ju yeah. July 25th. Yeah. And it's the second episode. But as I said before, this is another video test. It's intended to showcase Bonnie's movement abilities, and the narrator basically describes that a sound will play, and. Bonnie will move in a specific direction. When prompted, he moves his arms, fingers, and legs at different time intervals. However, uh, when he's asked to move his ears and eyes, something a bit more personal, he remains still. And after, yeah, afterward, during the video, actually, there are sequences where the screen switches between the video, I'll say, uh, the presentation and the actual camera, where we can see Bonnie. Again, uh, this is presumably the FNAF 2 location, taking place in the 80s, and the use of the models from the FNAF 2 animatronics just on Wither. And, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. After a couple sequences, instead of instructions, the screen, like, just stays blank. There's no text in the colored screen. And, yeah. After this, Bonnie disappears, and he slowly approaches the camera in darkness. And basically after that, since the suspense builds up, we get our first jump scare. Basically, Bonnie goes, oh! And yeah, the scene then changes to a gift, and the puppet emerges from the background. It's safe to say that this is one of our unexpected parts of the VHS, because a lot of people wouldn't picture this whole FNAF 2 thing going on, but yeah, a music box then appears, and yeah, the rest of the video is just a puppet opening the box, and at the last second, none other than Golden Freddy jumps out of the box, and the video ends. Once again, this these tapes are meant to like demonstrate that whole suspense element, but yeah, given that there was no kid gore in this episode what do you guys think about this entry it was good it was really really good then again freaky as heck freaky as hell <laughs> uh i mean the video is pretty much you know self-explanatory uh it's you know still the the unsettledness and all that and just the silence and everything just makes it 10 times better and uh that and definitely that bunny jump scare got caught me off guard that really caught me off guard. Like, oh shit but hey it is what it is <laughs> um <laughs> and also that 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 last golden that last golden freddy jump scare that also caught me off guard i was like what the? then again it just came at like last minute and then the next video started and i was like what uh, what uh, uh. <laughs> okay you just yeah, okay that was kind of, that was kind of like an unexpected bit one of the few jump scares yeah. that pretty much got me throughout the series it reminded me of one of matt pat's videos 
back in his early days, Matt Peck would cover Man. FNAF on a one by one entry basis. And when he did his episode of FNAF Free, he ended the episode. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. And then he cut to a Phantom Freddy jump scare. I shit my pants when I watched that when I was nine. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my regards to the episode, I'm gonna be honest with you. I I gently liked seeing how the uh, like seeing how the animatronics actually move throughout stage and like what you would supposedly see outside of uh, you know when they're when they're uh, supposed to say uh, stay on stage. Yeah, when they're supposed to like stay playing. still. Yeah, when they when yeah. they're not supposed to do anything next thing you know they're they're gone they're out them vanishing and then us like uh cutting to uh, the uh, puppet i noticed something that the, that that uh that the puppet had in the mask and that that it was gory like it had blood uh blood parts uh all over it and Ooh, I, i'm yeah, gonna be honest oh, that, that unset yeah, yeah. that settled me off a bit yeah i see yeah like, I we're see not it used to seeing that Right, yeah. Now, okay. Now I see that. Now I'm seeing that. Or unless it could be just the, the you know, it could just be the shadowing. But hey, I don't know, man. Considering that how was... gory, considering how gory this, this, you know, this series is, I wouldn't be surprised if that's actual blood. But still, it, it's a, it's a pretty good, you know, like theory. It's, it's like a pretty good detail. I like that. Yeah. And oh, <laughs> uh, like the fr the Friday jump scare kind of just, I chucked my phone across my room because of it god so <laughs> yeah <laughs> r.i.p phone yeah, yeah that's, like, that's everything regarding you know, the episode and also like what i really like about uh you know this 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 episode is the uncanniness of it you know uh and, it, and what I like about the series is that sometimes it makes you question whether there's something there or not. Because when when we pan out to see where Bonnie went, you know, he's in, he's in the dark. We really don't know where exactly he is up until he starts manifesting slowly. But then again, it makes you like rewind and then see, okay, was he there before? Okay, is he, the, is he now there? Is he now this way? Is he... it's, it's a whole thing. And I like that. I, I like that it keeps you like guessing a bit, you know, saying like, okay, where is he now? When is he gonna pop up? And considering how short the video is, you don't exactly know when he's gonna hit, when he's gonna pop out at you. So I also kind of, yeah. so I really, so I also like that, um, that that little touch. Yeah, more or less when I'm watching these ep these types of tapes episodes, like analog horror in general, I always tend to be on edge because I know that. A lot of these tapes use jump scares as a tactic to like attract the viewer in and yeah, yeah. I always have to be on edge so a lot of them don't get me but the good jump scares I would say are the ones that where you don't expect anything at all like nothing yeah Silence. I'm pretty sure that that, that the golden Freddy jump scare like, at the end like yeah yeah oh yeah silence Oof. is honestly like the best I feel like silence definitely goes along with a, with a good jump scare because you know, seeing a lot of seeing you know, plenty, uh, plenty of horror movies where they have some sort of like string playing in the background, and then boom, like jump scare, and it's, it, it, it's already you know you can already it's already, it's a bit predictable. But when there's absolutely nothing, no sound at all, and then it just comes out of nowhere. Now that that is freaky. That's that, something. That's a good jump scare. That's a jump scare. <laughs> that's a jump scare. Yeah. Oof. And in so, the VHS tapes, the only type of like sound we hear are just the uh, the the the, the static in the background. That's all. Yet, you know. Yet it's still silent. I'm just gonna throw that out. The static really sets to what we're like looking at. It's like a right. '90s. It's a '90s VHS tape, but, uh, and those used to have like a bunch of static or a bunch of like, oh, uh, yeah. like just yeah like 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 a little quality, bit of white yeah, like visuals and yeah, those yeah. Uh, and those like uh those like what are those cut the, uh the cuts you know where it's like right. animation all that yeah right it just sets the mood really well everything that's in that video 
big to me. Yeah, we're gonna get to that in a bit, the cuts. But yeah, a quick uh, reminder that for for those of you who haven't who haven't consumed FNAF content, the basic gist of things is, as I said, as I mentioned before, the killer like stuffs the kids into the suit. And I get that a lot of people watching this are gonna know that, but for those who don't, and I say it because with this next entry is when we really get in the whole business of the yeah. kids talking to you through the suits. And yeah, this is a common theme with a lot of FNAF media. A lot of people theorize that the kids try to talk to you with when they interact with the character and stuff as they're, uh, yeah, as they're, shit, I forgot to speak. I forgot how to speak. Yeah, as they're in the suits, and this series is where we really get to see that shine. As I said before, is where we really get to see the horror element, the whole like just shock of the, the idea shock value. of the kids in the suits, the shock factor. Some lost Superman type shit, except it's kids in a suit. But yeah, right. Uh, right. Also, yeah, Dragon. Wait, he's deaf and fuck. Anyways, so yeah, uh, are we gone? So the next entry that we're going to see this is number three, episode three, sound response check. By now, if you haven't noticed, there's a common theme in season one where each episode focuses on a specific animatronic. Episode right. one focuses on Freddy, episode two on Bonnie, and episode three focuses on Chica, once again with the FNAF 2 model. The episode is another uh, tape of some tests or some training, whatever. And it's basically a recording of an employee testing Chica, uh, testing some sound responses. And yeah, the tape is used to test Chica's response to sounds. An audio is played and Chica responds by looking left. Basically, I have the same audio playing and the narrator describes where she should be looking uh this and this this sound is gonna play she's gonna look to the left and she looks to the left a different audio is played and then she looks to the right another audio is played and then chica looks directly at the viewer and it kind of stays there for a bit creates this element of oh shit, what's gonna happen with these tapes and all and yeah, after this, it's when shit really gets down, because after that long pause, which already creates the whole buildup, um, some music box starts to play, some calm music, and and then some text starts appearing in front of Chica instead of with the whole like presentation thing going on. And it kind of seems like someone is talking to us through Chica maybe the kid we don't know basically the screen cuts to text as the music's playing and someone is talking with us through the, te through the, te fuck, through the text it reads the music makes me feel better and then it changes it makes me think about birds i like birds they are pretty and it sets the tone as if someone's thinking about birds and talking about it to the viewer. And then it says, one time I saw a bird sleeping in the snow. That is what bad dreams are about. And then it cuts to, I feel like I'm sleeping in snow and I can't get up. It's too cold for me to do that. And, and, uh, fuck. And, and it, Dios mio. An image starts appearing next to Chica as these words are, are being uttered. I feel like I'm sleeping in snow and I can't get up. It's too cold for me to do that. Things don't breathe when they sleep in snow. I can't breathe. And then the image starts appearing. What looks to be a little girl, distorted, to look as if, as if she's dead or just soulless. And then the phrase repeats, I can't breathe. And then it flickers. It flickers. It goes to a negative screen. And an image of a censored dead bird lying in the snow. It starts flickering. 
and then the tape ends. I feel like this is one of the more dramatic episodes because here's where you really start to see, oh shit, something deeper is going on here. And yeah, that's when you really start to see that because now we know that the kids are in the suits because one of them just talked to us and she mentioned elements of how she feels inside the suit. So now we know. The viewer knows. And yeah, that's when people really get dragged into the story. So Travi, what do you think? Uh, this episode was also a doozy, you know, same same with with, with Bonnie. But you know, and but like you said, in this in this uh in this episode, it, it gives it I mean you pretty much explained it yourself. Now we we now we know that this child is you know is trapped here and uh and they're trying to speak out to us and it's pretty sad because you know considering what the killer did to these children it is it's it's horrifying and uh then again you know it really sets the tone that you know giving giving these these animatronics personality and uh and, and all of that and and then again, it was also really, really creepy and all, uh, as, as well as the whole series, you know, that's pretty much the point of it. But this one was also, you know, this one was also pretty damn freaky. Um, yeah, that's the one thing I like about this episode in specific. The exposure gets to the story. As I said before, this right. is when we say, no oh, shit, something deeper is happening here. Yeah. As if we're actually living the story. And yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, as I mentioned before, these first few episodes cover each animatronic on a per episode basis. And as such, the last mainline animatronic is Foxy. Which brings us to episode four, Pirate Cove pre-show. Ooh. This episode takes a slightly different approach to how it like opens. It opens... Mm -hmm with an animation of Foxy. Uh, yeah, basically it's Foxy an cartoon? animation of Foxy. What? A Foxy cartoon is what you're trying to say, I mean? Yeah, that's when we're, that's what we're talking about now. Also, Dragon, you kind of missed the whole Chica uh, oh. Fox expression. What do you think about the third episode, sound response check? Disturbing, really disturbing. Well, Dragon, the entire series is disturbing. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, <laughs> like, how it was put out, how it was, uh, how it was set, how Chica was placed, and I don't know, I just found everything really... Yeah, it was pretty, pretty unsettling, just, you know. Yeah, yeah it, it, it was semi-unsettling to watch. Without yeah, being, like, and freaked out. it's not... Yeah, that, 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 that gave me... That, that gave me a thought that I didn't have previously and that is that some series try to capitalize on the, on the pain on the sorrow that involves loss and it brings it to you at face value like I mentioned but other series tend to manipulate happiness innocence of a child as it's presented here and yeah the, the child presumably a girl in the suit tries to speak to us completely happily but then it cuts to like this whole like violence like unsettling music and then the dead bird it manipulates us by right, making us right. believe that the girl is completely happy like innocent in that suit which she is she speaks to us in an innocent tone and then it cuts to all that it's a really good right. contrast yeah so okay. now back to episode four boxy pre Basically, it starts with a cartoon of Foxy saying that his show is going to start in a few minutes. This is like those Chuck E. Cheese type tapes where the characters like are in a video sequence talking to each other or like in an animated form before their shows actually start to kind of like keep the kids in place while they're getting the show ready or stuff like that. And yeah, it opens with this animation. and. Foxy shows that his performance in Pirate's Cove is beginning in three minutes. And then 
it's kind of like a countdown thing. It's really, I, I feel like this part of the episode really reflected with the whole FNAF 2 go, go, go minigame, you know, where you chase after kids right. as Foxy. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because after this, the screen cuts to black, and then we see five silhouettes, five kids, and then one fades away. And then the animation plays again, but the audio's gone. So yeah, there's like a little jingle playing, but then since the black screen, there's no audio playing. The audio completely cut out. So now it's just Foxy talking. And the animation repeats itself. And yeah, the tape yeah. just like cuts midway through Foxy's announcement. And the black screen like cuts into the screen again. The four children show up. And one and another kid disappears. Now it's three kids. And then the animation plays once again. It's the exact same animation. It's all three times. Like the animation's playing. But then uh, this is one of the yeah. This is one of the. I'm oh, sorry. I got reminded of something. This is one of the bits of the the few bits of the audio series that. It just gets reflected onto a meme for some reason. And in this case, like a little alarm is playing like rrr, rrr, rrr. and as the animation is playing, instead of the boxy voice lines or whatever, we get the voice of a narrator saying, viewing of this tape is prohibited, discarded immediately. And it repeats and it repeats itself like a couple of times until the animation ends. And then the kids, the remaining three kids, disappear one by one. There were two, they were one, and there were none. And then a purple figure, who we know in the fandom is William Afton, appears. He says, what's the matter, Foxy? I thought you wanted an audience. And then the scene changes to Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica twitching violently on the stage as the words go 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 is overlaid on them as if someone is running the tape then cuts to 3d and foxy sits alone in a dark space from afar and in front of him is human is fuck is golden freddy golden freddy appears in front of him with human-like eyes and then twitching rapidly it's this he's just completely erratic and then everything goes calm as Golden Freddy hangs himself from a purple robe. The twitching stops and his eyes go black. And the video ends. Oh. Mm. Cool. Yeah, the I'm other just gonna episode. throw this out here. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. That was the most like gruesome thing you'll ever see, like regarding the end. Like the Chica yeah. video was its own thing. Yeah. But yeah. you but this one... seeing it in detail, <laughs> it Man. just says, Hey, I'm here, I'm gruesome as fuck. You will have nightmares for weeks for just watching <laughs> me. Right, right. And wow. It's why did I put myself through that torture? Cause why not? Right. And like the Man. You know. <clears throat> and, and and this and this last bit as well, you know, also incredibly disturbing. With just with, with just Golden Freddy just twitching and his eyes just looking straight at me, I was I was thinking, I'm done. This is the end of me. I'm 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 out. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm next up. thing you know, he appears in your closet. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Say hi. And then like it just you know it just fades away. And then the awkward, the very, very awkward silence, not knowing what else is going to happen. And then the video just ends and then the new one begins. And it's like, your mind is constantly like, you know, you watch, you happen, you watch one happen, of the what's tapes. Happen, what's happen? Right, like one, how to explain it? Like, you watch one of the tapes, something crazy happens, and like you're stuck with that for a while. And then the next one begins as if the last one didn't, you know, didn't really mean anything oh you know uh here's a dead kid but hey we have a freddy manual here it's like uh, uh okay that uh, sure but like your mind is still like revolves around that that scene that same scene 
and just plays over and over again and once you get over that once you process it or once you process it and you can move to the next one and like the the, the cycle kind of repeats again you know and uh and then again it's the uncanniness and the and the unsettledness pretty much the yeah yeah the uncanny is like the, the uncanniness is the best word for it the uncanniness of this whole series and specifically this episode is is really well done it's incredibly well done all i know is i'm gonna have nightmares that's it yeah we all have nightmares <laughs> yeah but about, about this guy in specifically oh yeah about this guy yeah about this guy specifically that's gonna be crazy <laughs> I ain't sleeping tonight. Oh, then, oh, then you just befriend him. That you just like befriend him, you know. Like, how do you, you befriend if you, if you re- a, a like seven feet uh, tall well, let, golden? Let's say, okay, so let's say that you're in a nightmare. Now, let, let just say that that you're in a nightmare with this dude. And if you if you realize that you're in a nightmare, try to befriend him. You know, just just hey, what's up? <laughs> What's up, my guy? Hey, 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 hey. What's up, my guy? I hey, definitely hey, mean, good, yeah, please don't kill me. Mm. Please don't kill me. Nah, you, you just, just, just try to talk him out of it. You know, it'll help. It'll How do you help. talk <laughs> a spirit out of just stuffing you well, into a if spirit? It, well, if you're in the nightmare, then you could just speak him out. You know, hey man, don't hurt me. I'm, I'm all. Cool. Or you can just pull a Ghostbusters and just suck the living soul out of him, quite literally. Right. I question right, right. y'all's motives. Yeah, but, you know, it is what it is, man. You gotta, you gotta work your way around it. <laughs> you gotta work your way around. Dragon, it. we're talking about a series where kids possess the suits where they were fucking technically buried. Nothing is impossible. Literally, <laughs> like that's that's like saying if someone went to a fucking robotics convention and then after hours someone killed the janitor and stuffed them into one of the models, and then. The day after at the convention, the, the model starts tweaking and then op- bu- like opens, revealing everything or some shit. But yeah, stuff like that. And yeah, given that we're talking about our world as it is, I have zero doubts that there will be maniacs out there who will try to recreate similar events. Let's hope not. But yeah, nothing is impossible. Anyways. Moving on, uh, as I said before, the episodes cover the animatronics on a per character basis, but we've drawn out. There are no longer any animatronics, so what is there to do? Enter the final tape in season one. Fuck, I have hiccups. That's not the actual title. <laughs> Man, my favorite episode. Fuck, I got hiccups. God damn. <laughs> the video is called non-existent video ironic since I found it right. and yeah Ooh. this video Ooh. this tape is really where we really get to see the whole narrative element like this is when we see oh shit they're speaking to us and yeah from start to finish this entire video is just complete cabron complete narration and yeah all right Shit, uh i lost myself yeah non existent video the season finale it's actually quite short for four and a half minutes but it also gives us the most content it's speaking to us from start to finish the tape begins that with a warning that it contains disturbing content and then it breaks the fourth wall by saying but you'll watch it anyway you have to and then the tape then the tape cuts it fades to something that looks like a commercial with different animatronics performing a gold bear and a gold bunny performing old timey songs for those of you who don't know this is Fred Bear's family diner a oh, presumed Lord. establishment before the modern day Freddy's Pizza open in lore. We see them for the first time here. So, after a couple of seconds of performing, the video then cuts to a commercial for a Springlock suit 
the the jingle plays and then they advertise a spring lock suit it's basically an endoskeleton for an animatronic which can be adjusted so that a person can fit inside and wear it as a costume it's a two-in-one animatronic and costume suit and yeah the image then zooms out and we see the text but then we don't even give it a time to read it the screen fades again it cuts and a, a, a fun, it fades in a mask of fret bear the yellow bear it pops oh, up sorry. and then the other details fade in blood seeps in from its jaw and the screen flickers to red as distorted screams are heard and then it cuts to dark and then it shows a scene the FNAF 1 office, the office where the security guard works, how could this affect anything? And then it uses assets from the games to see the office. Then we see Golden Freddy hunched over and then his jump scare screen. After this, after the shit flickers, we then hear distorted music boxes, something similar to the horse rally. Then Freddy. Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, all four of their heads are shown on screen flickering. And then they switch and we get the first glimpse of text. Someone is talking to us. It's like a movie trailer of sorts. Four tapes hidden inside their empty heads. And then previous references to the tapes, descriptions of how the, uh, how the kids faced, fuck, how the kids fates ended up in the suits. Freddy ripped apart with a smile. Bonnie dancing in the dark. Chica's wonderful song. Foxy meets the happy man. And then we see stills of all the tapes. Freddy hunched over with his endo face exposed. Bonnie's feet moving as he's in the stage. Chica staring directly at the camera. And Foxy talking nonchalantly in the animation. And then the screen says... Yeah, then this fuck, I can't, I can't, I can't speak. I don't know why it's always stuttering, but yeah. Afterwards, the screen cuts. It says, you are gifted. You found the fifth. And then Golden Freddy's head appears, mouth open. And then the narration begins. It goes completely still. And text starts appearing as if someone is talking with us directly through the screen. The text reads as follows. Let me tell you something you might not know. Before your brother died, someone died. Something else happened at that place. Something was wrong with the suits. Watch. The video then cuts to the yellow rabbit, Spring Bonnie, and the sounds, the, the screen glitching, it sounds as if someone is trapped in the suit, blood gushing, something is wrong with the spring locks. And then it cuts again to text. I'm going to tell you a secret. The same thing happened to your father. It killed him, but only for a while. He is still out there. Do you want to find him? I'll show you. Then it cuts all of a sudden as the face of the puppet appears with the text. It cuts to black. Fazbear's Frights logo from the FNAF free location, the horror attraction, pops up. And then we get a message that we get a message that is seemingly alludes to people trying to guess the lore. It continues to speak to us. Don't worry about times, dates, or locations. You'll know when it happens. It cuts to Springtrap on a dark silhouette and fire billowing behind him. The screen says there will be a gasoline canister in the back next to the second exit. Your father will be there in the building with you. He will look different. But you know it's him. Then you can end this. 
for good. It stops completely blank. And then the, the narrator alludes to us. I know how you feel, Michael. It's a lot of responsibility. But when this is done, we'll all be free. You will be free too. It may not seem like it, but I believe your brother will forgive you. I've forgiven you too. You are good, Michael. Despite what you might think, you do deserve this happy ending. I've been working all this time to give you that opportunity. I love you, Michael. And then the screen cuts to Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie talking as if the show is ending. And the screen cuts to black. End communication. And the season ends. So, what do we think? You were counting, like, you weren't saying all that. And I was just, I was holding on to something, like, oh my lord, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I gotta was, read all your books. You were reading it like if we were part of the damn thing. Right, right. <laughs> I was like, I was like thinking, like, <laughs> I was like yeah, thinking, this, this man is actually, this man is actually like just give it like someone like an audio drama to it. It's like this man is actually saying it in, in like it, his own way, like this, 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 this creepy voice. I'm sorry, but like, what look, <laughs> this was my favorite episode because oh yeah, yeah, like knowing, we can, we can like tell. knowing the whole context of FNAF, the events, the lore, and seeing this play out. It's like a visually enhanced demonstration like when i first saw this i think i saw the yeah i saw the baddington edition first but when i saw this i just said wow holy shit yeah i was kind of on edge but it was so it was that good it was incredible. of course there are some it things was... that baddington added when i first saw it that kind of estranged me a bit when i didn't see them here but yeah this tape is still good i, I, yeah, I kind of oh, got yeah. confused yeah. because yeah, I kind of got confused because Baddington added a couple of things in his edition. He he edited some things. He used like some more vintage models, and he added some sequences that aren't in the original, like this one. He added a sequence where they're testing the the fuck the spring lock suit. They're teaching you how to use it, and then it cuts to the commercial, and then it cuts to like some some spring lock suit acting on its own and stuff like that but yeah nonetheless really good like knowing the whole context of fnaf for those of you who don't know the presumably the narrator is explaining to us the events of the story and afterwards who's who seems to be charlie the pup the girl who was killed inside the put and stuffed inside the puppet is speaking to us we are michael or michael afton we are the son of William Afton, the guy who killed the the kid, the kids, and the, the puppet, presumably, since it appeared, is speaking to us. He's a, it's alluding to the events that happened that led to this moment, how Michael originally killed his brother, who in this series is known as Joseph. The crying child, the bite victim, the reason why we see Fredbear bloodied up, in the fandom, it, he's known as, as Evan, but in, for, in in these tapes, he's known as Joseph for some reason. So, yeah, that's what happened. And, yeah, honestly, I love, every, I love everything about this tape. Just knowing the whole context and pl it plays out in front of us, it's just mind-blowing. And, yeah, that's... 10 out of 10 for me from this tape. Honestly, it's incredible. But yeah, uh, any thoughts from you guys? What do you guys think? Oh, I, all I got to say is I completely agree with with all that you said. And I'm going to be real. You should really start like going into narr narration or something like it. Because Jesus Christ, you, <laughs> kept, me Chicago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kept me on edge. <laughs> 
I've done yeah. my cup. I've I've done a couple of narrations here and there, but yeah, I just had to whip it out because man, Good. that that this tape was oh, yeah, so you're, sensational. You're, yeah. You just had to do it. You just had to do it. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm trying to generally explain my... I'm trying to explain my passion for this. Like, we do, agree with you with 100%. Yeah, you just had to do it. <laughs> no, but, I, but I'm just saying, nah, I'm just saying, nah, nah, I'm, just saying nah, nah, I'm just saying, like, I'm being honest, like, I, it's not bad. You know, if anything, you did a pretty good job of it. So, hey, I ain't complaining. But, hey, yeah. Hey, um, I... Hey, hey, yeah, but you know, uh, with now season you think one about it, this entire up, series is just AI gone haywire. Is it? But yeah, right. uh, <laughs> no, but, uh, but <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Moving but, on, you know, with now because this season... is a because it was set up in this story. Now we're getting to the other bits of the of the tale. The series now jumps into season two. There are seven tapes. Yeah, uh, it, and, uh, I'm starting to interrupt. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to interrupt. And I, unlike I season one, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I wasn't done with my uh, with my opinion about season one as a whole. Uh huh. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Pero nada, este, um, you know, at first in in uh, in season one, going to going back to season one, at first. When I was like watching the first four tapes, I really, you know, I really didn't know exactly what it was building up to. You know, I was just like watching these and I was going like, okay, as somebody, as somebody who knows the lore, or at least the basics of it, you know, uh, okay, so these five kids were, you know, they were killed, they were stuffed into, into animatronics and all that. And like, you know, what else? And then the, the fifth video comes along with the uh, non-existent video. And already with the title, I said, this is definitely meant for somebody, you know. And when they and whenever the person who's talking mentions uh, mentions Michael, then it, you know, then that's when I started to like piece the piece the puzzles together. Because my theory is that these four these four um, videos, they were probably I mean they were pretty much just they were originally uh you know tapes and videos that the company that the company made and, and, and all that but these ghosts were manipulating it and <laughs> kind of like editing the video you know they were just like manipulating the the video in order to tell michael what's really going on you know and just pretty yeah, much heard, al yeah. alternating everything like alternating everything uh and instead of like you know instead of having freddy uh, you know, instead of having like a normal video manual of, you know, uh, dismounting Freddy and all that, the ghost, what, you know, what, what, what he did was try to show Michael what was really going on in, in, you know, yeah, pretty much what was really going on with Freddy and not just Freddy, but all those, but also with the other, uh, with the other animatronics and they were telling him like, Hey, we're alive. We're here. Now we're going to tell you what's really going on and what happened to us. And uh, and you know not now it makes sense with the last with, with this last video the non-existent video because I was like okay now I see where where we're getting it and although season one you know uh, had its conclusion it also you know gave way to 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 this you know the, the it also gave way to this thought that hey it isn't over yet there's still much more to to explain there you know. Then came season two, and with season two, shit, shit got real, you know. So yeah. then again, I like the transition from season one to season two, because these ghosts were trying to, you know, they were manipulating the videos. Then again, like somewhat editing it, it's like editing them themselves, and and pretty much just gave gave Michael the order to kill. You know, kill, kill the, kill the killer. <laughs> you know, just end it. Just end it completely. Criminal, 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 criminal. criminal. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's pretty much um, my thought. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's that, that's pretty much it. You know, just the uh, just the build up. Yeah, this build series is really good at making build up and just everything how it's presented here is just. 
completely masterful. But yeah, moving on. Season two. We'll discuss that whole criminal bit later. But fun yeah. fact, I actually saw someone else parody that bit before the actual tapes themselves. The, I know that Ooh. bit is originally from from these tapes, but as we as we saw them, like the distorted shit, I saw that bit originally from that one Corey Kenshin video where he's playing one of the games. Uh huh. Like, that's to him, and I like that. I saw image of him smiling in the criminal, yeah. criminal, yeah, criminal, 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 yeah. criminal. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many renditions of that video. They're great. <laughs> they're so. They're great. Yeah, it just goes to show the impact this that, like these series have had. Right. So, not just this series, but other series like it, like the Mandela Catalog, which, by the way, in my understanding, is not. I mean, is if not the most watched, then one of our most consumed episodes across all platforms and has like hundreds of views. And I think that's a, an accomplishment in and of itself. But yeah, as I was saying, it's actually really funny the impact this series has had on others. And I know that Mandela Catalog, I'm pretty sure it came before. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's nonetheless. A really good series because it uses a bunch of elements that this series uses as well so that's a huge plus okay now the actual discussion season two uh i can't speak sorry uh, uh okay yeah season two episode one night security training video give me a second Ooh. All right, just so we uh, just so we're not in uh, in a full full silent for like a couple minutes. This is just basically what it sounds like at start. It's just a what you presumably give, what you would give like a, a night security guard, like as a when you're first like. How do I say this? Yeah, pretty much like the tutorial on how to. Yeah, yeah the tutorial how to just your, how, to, how do to do your job. Yeah, exactly, and pretty much just goes over the basics of you know the doors, uh, the cameras, and all that. Honestly, that entire uh, that entire video, like the start, it was a bit funny to me, <laughs> mostly because of the really choppy animation it has. Right, uh, right. And, and also, and also, like the the, the the miniature, you know, the, the caricature of just Freddy just chilling yeah. there and just doing everything. Honestly, I just find that, that like, like comparing too. that to uh, what we have now, where animations are over budgeted and like way too realistic, I find right. it funny and simple. Yeah, yeah. And then again, uh, the 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 vibe that the whole series is going is just retro, you know, nineties, eighties. And it does a really, really good job. I mean, you know, their VHS tapes for a reason. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I had to leave there for a bit. I had a, I suddenly got called, and yeah, I'm gonna provide the description for the tape now. So, moving on, uh, episode one, night security training video. The tape is another one of those training videos for a new security guard for Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. The first section explains how to use the CCTV system, the cameras and the tablet, and as soon as the, yeah, as soon as the, fuck, I can't speak, yeah, as soon as the narrator explains on the corner there should be a, a bunch of buttons, a map layout of the pizzeria, the buttons shall lead you to the different cameras, and after this, it cuts to black. The screen feed cuts to black, the background cuts to black, and it's just the Freddy character, the like, little cartoon looking at the screen, black. And then, the second section comes along, it shows us how to, see how to use the doors and lights in the office. But then, as it's explaining to us the the lights, how to use the lights, the light lights up the, the hall, but then we see a silhouette of an animatronic. Weird in a training video, right? And then it just cuts to black. For those of you who didn't know, that animatronic was Springtrap. 
And then the third section talks about possible dangers. It explains that the employee may face these dangers as the animatronics are allowed to be in free roam at night. And we see the an original image of the game of the four of the free animatronics. Mm. And yeah, afterwards it cuts to section four. I am here. And the text that displays from the bottom, it just tells Michael to help him breaking out from the hidden room. It just tells him the 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 explanation, the whole screaming and the pounding. It goes on and yeah, this is another fourth wall break. Much like the other video, this is a groundbreaking entry. It opens to the to the tune of just the sheer horror. And yeah, as I said before, the section like just cuts and says the hidden room in the bathroom hallway. The boards break them. I'm there. I'm in there. Michael, your father. I'm your father. I want to talk to you. I only want to see my boy. Like, there's no punctuation. Like, he's just that desperate. And you hear screaming and pounding as choppy images of Springtrap gradually opening his head to see the corpse of William Afton just there. Like, that's just horror. That's pure horror. And, yeah. Really good episode. What do you guys think? I agree. I agree. Really, really good episode. Well, incredibly well made. Just immaculate. Immaculate. And, you know, same thing with the with the whole uncanniness and the whole whole unsettled vibe that the uh, that the episode gives. Well, uh, well made, just well, incredibly well made. Uh, on my part, uh, I stated this a bit like a like a bit ago, but I find it hilarious how the video starts and just comparing those animations to now, what we have now. But then it moving to a more serious tone to where um, we're just experiencing where he was in the first location or what I am assuming to be the first location. It's just unsettling at the end and seeing pictures of Springtrap it helps the case of the video saying i am here and you're watching me shit's but I'm also about to you. go damn shit's about to go damn <laughs> <laughs> pretty much oh lord i'm like i'm gonna have nightmares after this <laughs> mm, should we continue the video the next one? I think we should. I, yeah. I, I, Sorry. We should. I spaced that for a moment. So, <laughs> yeah. As... Yeah. Okay. Episode 2. It's the next one in line, obviously. And... It's called Facial Recognition Testing. We kind of, like, retain the original focus on a per-animatronic basis. But now, we understand that... As the original series, this season two takes place in the actual FNAF 2 location. So now we know. And yeah. Fuck you. Oh, my dragon. Sorry, I got a message from Dragon. That's just. Fuck you, dragon. <laughs> I Anyways. like messing with this man. Yeah. Basically. Uh, episode 2, it's called Facial Recognition Software. Now we know this takes place in FNAF 2 because we see Toy Bonnie hunched over, sat down. And I've seen similar tapes where other people have done this, but instead of a training video of like a or like a still footage, this is a real video, a, a guy recording, and he's like sitting there, like recording for the company, he's recording a test. And Toy Bonnie sat, and the guy mentions that the software uh, works like this. He's gonna show pictures of people to Toy Bonnie, and if they're like a completely normal person, like they haven't done anything, then his eyelids are gonna move up. He's gonna make like an open eyes expression. But then, if the person in the photo is a criminal, 
it appears he has like a database in a software or something of every felon in the area or something not sure uh yeah i'm uh i'm uh i'm uh put a bit more detail into that so basically what the new toy animatronics have is a facial recognition system where it takes the database of prisoners throughout the county and if there's any felons or any uh more more per se people who tend to do harm to others the yeah, uh, it's gonna Primitive. either beep or take more drastic measures per se you may continue yeah that basically but as we move on toy bonnie like he gets shown these different photos like he opens his eyes if he sees a normal person but then he opens his eyes and makes a beeping sound with his mouth because his mouth opens in a beep sound whenever he looks at a picture of a criminal and the guy gradually like shows pictures innocent eyes criminal beep just on and on until we get a couple of pictures in and the guy just like gets confused because he sees a picture like a strange picture of a normal guy but he's like has an unusual face to him and Toy Bonnie opens his eyes, he stands up, and then he charges at the guard all of a sudden. And then he quickly, like, gives Toy Bonnie a controlled shock, and presumably he collapses off screen. And, yeah, basically the guy rants about how they shouldn't have that guy here. He mentions that guy. And how he just... Like does it doesn't want to work there anymore because he they treat him bad or stuff, and yeah. At the top left corner, a human face gradually appears, and then the tape cuts off as we have a blur come on screen, and yeah, this, this is the funny moment I was talking about. Basically, an a image, highlight, a highlight, <laughs> yeah, a highlight, the highlight, an image, an image of a dude, some white dude that looks from someone from Utah and yeah basically the distorted low-pitched voice of someone saying criminal 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 uh, criminal 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 I mean yeah should we Bro, state that okay that you're saying okay I, lo- okay I like how you're saying it like as if it were a pop song criminal 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 it's like what <laughs> yeah like he says it and then it gradually like fades into an echo effect that's what i mean and right. yeah the image gradually appears and then the voice cuts out and william's face turns purple like the image just turns purple and gets distorted into this horrific rendition of a void smile and this is when we know like this is the guy like this, this is who is. did the, who killed the kids this, this is, is purple yeah you guy. know this, this is the man right here. This is him. It's him. It's the guy. All right. So, I don't mean to be insensitive, but this next bit is going to be quite amusing to me, kind of funny, porque this next tape, I watched it live. With actually this the, the the previous tape I also watched it live with Travi and yeah. sorry I burped. I watched it live with Travi and as it was happening I was laughing my ass off because I didn't know that's where the criminal bit came from and I just lost my shit when I saw it. Right. <laughs> yeah, because that's a meme. And right. yeah, we basically see that happening and all right, so. We see that happen, and then cuts to this episode, which I also saw with him. I'm gonna do like some. I'm gonna change my voice to like differentiate because there's a two-way dialogue. But yeah, this uh, this entry is basically a camera recording of a room in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, presumably the tables in front of the stage, and then Bonnie and Chica, the. Uh, I feel like it's the FNAF 1 models. Yeah, because now we know that this takes place after the original 
Freddy's location, and this is probably in the 90s. And Bonnie and Chica walk into the room, and their dialogue is shown in text on the screen. Chica says, Hi, Lucas. And Bonnie says, Hey. Do you think it'll be him this time? I don't know. Probably not. For all we know, he might just be gone. Wherever he is, I hope he's sorry for what he did to you. I don't think he'd be sorry for anyone. Well, I hope so anyway. He should be sorry because you're a very good brother. And I don't want you to be sad anymore. And then we see a bit of humanity with the animatronics for the first time because Bonnie says, thanks. He brings his hand to his face as if he's gonna cry. And then Chica says, please don't cry. I know you're sad now, but one day you won't be. We'll go to heaven because we're supposed to. And then Bonnie just looks at Chica all of a sudden with like a bit of a grave undertone. Because he says, I am so glad you don't really know what's happening. And he lowers his hands. And Chica says, do you want me to go look? Bonnie affirms. And then he says, I'll be in the back again. Chica just says, okay. And then Chica walks away and they both leave. And afterward, we use like a strange old vintage lullaby. And that the screen fades to black. Like that's it. The entire video is a dialogue between the two animatronics after their after puñeta, as if the kids are speaking to each other. And we get our first bit of personal info about about the kids. The kid inside Bonnie is a boy named Lucas. And that's it. So what do you guys think? Honestly. I see it as a as a break from you know the entire gore as spectrum. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I also see it as like a sense of humanity. Oh, these are kids. You, we we gotta remember that yeah. these are just kids. Yeah, exactly. These that are don't children. Know much. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it really I kinda... makes you. And and it really makes you like. And it really makes you wonder why in the hell would William Afton do this? You know, why 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 would he do this? And uh, you know, we we you know we get closure in the uh, in, in the in the later you know, in later episodes. But watching this, you know, uh, you know, just 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 watching this at first, uh, you're just thinking like, mm, man. Uh, this how do I explain it? I mean how do I explain this like it's something it, it, it's, it's something, just right it, it's, it's something something right <laughs> right yeah it's definitely something all right but yeah yeah in the end it's actually a strangely wholesome encounter a contrast from like dragon said all the gore the pause per se what? It's a pause from everything. Yeah, it's a break from it's everything. It's a break from everything. It's the humanity. Then again, and then again like you pause. said, it, it humanizes them. It humanizes them. Ugh. Yeah. 100%. But yeah. Uh, now we go to the next entry in the, in the season. Episode 4, I think it is. Yeah, episode 4 of season 2. It's a company PSA. The tape is intended to be shown to employees of Fred Bears after the unfortunate incident that occurred the previous week. It probably alludes to the bite of 83, where as where the crying child gets bitten after Michael shoves him in the suit and accidentally like, activates his spring locks. But yeah it just i'm pretty sure that's what it's alluding to here and then the company states that fred bear will be replaced mm -hmm. and spring bonnie will be replaced too 
by Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, and that they will, they will rearrange the area to create two stages. The tape cuts up briefly before returning to normal. The narrator said that if a customer asks about the new changes, the, the employee must reply, Fred Bear does not exist. Spring Bonnie does not exist. <laughs> Nothing happened to anyone. And then repeating, he does not exist. And yeah, this is just like some really unsettling stuff. Because just saying that the, with the whole narrator voice and everything, it just makes you feel like you're being hypnotized into thinking these things. And like, yeah, employees are obviously trained for those responses. But even then, like, it makes you feel on edge, even if you're not trying to. It's just that Red Bear does not exist. Spring, Spring Bonnie does not exist. It reminded me of that one bit in Avatar where the lady says, there are no troubles in Ba Sing Se or whatever the fuck. And yeah, the, uh, the uh, Lake of Lalokai, that guy, that that episode. No, the, no, the girl when they visit Ba Sing Se. Yeah, it's from that episode, the Lake of Lalokai. Basically, uh, they hypnotize a bunch of people, and the key word to it is you will visit the Lake of Lalokai or something like that, or the or the king invites you to the Lake of Lalokai or something like that. Oh yeah, that. And it just immediately hypnotizes the, the person to uh, be submissive and uh, respond to every command. Yeah. So. Yeah, that episode. But, yeah, afterward, Golden Freddy, or as he's referred to here, Joseph Apton, appears far away in a black background, offended that they say he doesn't exist that he thought that you were sorry and he as he gets closer he accuses you the viewer of lying that you loved him before saying that he didn't love you either and that he will quote unquote take you with me so you'll know how it feels to stop existing and then it cuts to black the image that is presented is a, a gaze distorted and yeah we see that's the crying child but yeah that's it so what do you think about this episode going back to the creepiness going back to the greediness just crazy, <laughs> just crazy. No. uh what can i say what can i say you know it was it was very weird when the when the guy just said like who you know who are these new characters and so in the situation where you're asked any anything along these lines this is what you're saying reply and then that's when he says red bear does not exist spring bonnie does not exist and it really it, it brought me like a really like a really weird eye you know it's like okay so what now oh. and then golden freddy appears at the end and then there's that message and i'm left a little bit confused but I say, okay, you know, it's nothing. I'm just gonna keep on watching these episodes because eventually they will, they will evolve and they will tell the story much more, you know, like precisely, more, yeah, more precisely, pretty much. But nonetheless, it was great. Uh, well, regarding my POV of the episode, I found it. I found it. Uh, Semi, semi like hypnotizing, uh, I guess, regarding everything uh, that the narrator says. But when it switches to uh, Fredbear or whatever he's called, I honestly say he had like, he, like he makes you th he, he makes you feel like uh like he you want to be terrified of him but you can't because if you do something's gonna happen to you it's just it's uh it's a weird unsettling feeling that i have regarding that that's basically everything right right yeah so moving on we have episode five 
five, five season two? Yeah, episode yeah. five. Yeah. Animated cartoon. This is another one of the animated entries, but unlike the Foxy entry, we actually get to see all of the get to characters. see all of the tape. And all the characters. It's an animated cartoon of by Fast Bear Entertainment of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Presumably it's a tape to demonstrate like all the characters and so like one another one of those pre-shows or of an existing series, we don't know. The episode is called The Missing Member Mystery. And it's just them talking after the restaurant closes down and this Freddy messing with Bonnie, like a couple of cartoon dynamics. And then it cuts to like a pizza party, a couple of seats with pizza on them as if the characters are going to eat. And and then it cuts to like the table and we see the table with four pizzas and four chairs and two extra chairs with empty plates. Chica asks why there are six chairs when there's only four of them. And then the rest of the crew brush it off as, as they're nothing. And Chica later finds a poster as she's heading into the kitchen with two figures. And it's basically a picture of like the vintage four animatronics and two animatronics in the front blurred out and stop it like both of you stop it and what yeah <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I'm messing with you they're, they're, te- they're texting each other but basically uh, yeah the two figures unbeknownst to Chica are probably Fred Baron and Spring Bonnie from the whole Fred Baron Friends show that aired canonically to the FNAF 4 and yeah basically there's that and as she rustles in the kitchen that is presumably a reference to chica rumbling around in the kitchen in fnaf 1 which it's a neat little detail and yeah basically we get to see that and chica hears like a strange noise coming and yeah after after she sees the photo, a music box plays, and for a split second, Chica turns into her full, like, animatronic form, like the model. And and then she, like, runs away from the, the kitchen in fear. Footage of flowers, someone rummaging through a field of flowers plays, and an eerie fretbear plush saying, Tomorrow is another day. And then it switches to Joseph on the screen, the kid. In, in front of flames saying we're never gonna get out and then a person in a spring lock suit and a foxy mask and the puppet all just like appear on screen like alluding to the different elements of the family and then joseph leaves a message to charlie the puppet it tells her that her br- that his brother is still a monster and that he won't save them he's basically has having resent for his brother Michael for not helping them even though Michael in this scenario is probably doing anything he can at this point and then he tells Nicole Lucas Angie and Benjamin to accept it they will be there forever stuck and that he had already accepted it we know by now that Lucas is Bonnie and presumably since Chica is inhabited by a little girl Probably Angie or Nicole. We don't know who, but yeah. And then the video after this reference ends. So what do you guys think? Okay, much more interactive than the last one. And uh you know it it, it has its it has its personality, man. I like it. I like it. I um I have the honestly I don't really have nothing to say to it other than just what we've heard that already about uh animation being funny and all that. Right, right. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Alright. Mm-hmm. So yeah. 
let me just say these next two episodes the finale of sorts like a part a two-part finale it's just they're just great they're really good like i watched these live with trevi yesterday and these two episodes are masterfully made they explore the story really well and yeah it just goes to show that the creator like masterfully made these like i love these two episodes but oh, yeah, yeah moving on uh we have episode six second to last in the series memories and yeah the tape begins with images of freddy bonnie chica foxy and spring bonnie like just well, as a lot of my starts playing and yeah it's just like memories of the characters and all that nostalgia and then it happens criminal 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 mm, criminal, yeah. criminal, yeah. criminal. <laughs> the image of william afton his mugshot appears and an audio recording starts playing William Afton basically introduces himself. He says that the listener has found the tape hidden in his bedroom. Actually, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to, like, narrate the tape. Hold on. God. Dragons start holding something. Bruh. Shut up. Dude, if you couldn't handle the last one, like, you're not going to My gonna, God, I was be doing that because of suspense. <laughs> now that I know that you're going to do it. Yeah, no, nah, don't worry about it. <laughs> I mainly did it because of suspense. Don't worry about it. And yeah, uh, it cuts to the title, Memories, and then the tape begins. Hello, whoever you are. You just found a cassette tape hidden in my bedroom. Isn't that strange? A man like William Afton, someone so simple and plain, hiding a cassette tape why would he be hiding anything i'm sure that if you're from around here you've heard of the somewhat recent happenings with freddy fazbear's pizza three cases of one one case of two all that adding up to the five missing children of freddy's that was me i'll elaborate on that later and you know I wouldn't call myself plain either. I mean, people may think that I'm plain when they first meet me. Just a father taking care of himself and his kids who tragically lost his youngest in 83. And then it cuts to Joseph on the screen and supposedly just get over it, right? Wrong. I'll never get over it. And the fact that he died isn't the only reason. You see, Michael did it. Not a surprise. Most people know that. But it wasn't an accident. He keeps saying that like he's a liar. He hates me. And he hated Joseph. It cuts to the foxy mask. You see, Michael wasn't settled with being the failure. And I know how much I loved Joseph so much more. So he tormented him. Eventually killing him. And you know... That's why I didn't love him in the first place. He was always a terrible kid, not worth my time. But now I'd hate him more than I ever have. He's done so much to hurt my soul in one day alone. My God, Joseph, it cuts to the fretbear plush with black eyes. Ever since he killed him, I've wanted to put my hands around his neck and just squeeze the life out of his lungs. But of course, if I ever did that, I'd get caught. I couldn't work because I was thinking too much about Mike. I couldn't concentrate on anything. The paper started piling up and it kept fogging up my mind and I needed a release. Then I had an idea. Hey, maybe it doesn't necessarily have to be Michael. It could be any other brat, as long as they... As long as they didn't see him. 
It doesn't have to be him. As long as they're like him, that's enough. Now, where do all those children go? Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And hey, if they're like Michael, they deserve it. It cuts to Freddy's torso with the black censored gore bit. I went up there about four times, picked the worst kids of the bunch, took them back, and I gave it to them. I couldn't do much, of course. They'd start squealing. So I made it quick enough to be efficient, but long enough to make it last. It was hell for them, but it was heaven for me. And then I leave without the slightest bit of guilt. So there you go. And now that you've heard of this, you should know that I check this spot every day to see if this tape has moved. I've seen it so many times, I'll be able to notice even the slightest difference. I will know. So you'd better put it back, Michael, as neatly as you can, and start running. And then it cuts to black. Wow. Like, that caught me off guard. Like, genuinely, yeah, as he was... It, it, yeah. It, it, like it, gives, he references it gives the, Michael it gives at the, the end. viewer at the end, and it gives the like at first it gives the uh, the false um, the false predicament, like the false feeling that you know he he's talking to potentially somebody who's found the tape. But the, as soon as he mentions, uh, as soon as he mentions Michael, then now we know that this shit is for real. <laughs> you know, now we know yeah, that this is actually Damn. meant for somebody specifically his son and Oof. man that is the voice actor did an amazing job you know, amazing the um the, the the because you could hear the uh i just this you could literally hear the the psychopathy the, the psychopathy like behind that voice you know this the voice of a psycho and then just saying like it was hell for them it was heaven for me and and all of that it, it's crazy it's mad creepy and i love that i i one of my favorite videos easy i mean there's so many good videos in this series but this this is one that's man one of my favorites yeah definitely one of the highlights for me and yeah like you said it's i love that false predicament where he just like records this tape like, as if he's no sense. longer present and just like right. we're we're normally like just getting along with the video like see what happens but then at the end like we start to realize hey not everyone's gonna know about this like why is this guy talking about his family and then he says right. so you better put it back michael like i imagine michael hearing that and he just went oh shit oh, fuck shit. <laughs> like fuck damn yeah. i'm gonna be honest with you okay i'm a f i'm just gonna throw this here if a similar situation happened to me and he just told me to like he broke the first uh the fourth wall and just told me hey mm start running i would have dropped everything looked outside my window and jumped out the front door in the, the in front that door listen why to, just listen hey why hey, the just front listen door to <laughs> just listen to i'm the expecting man. i'm expecting something hey, to happen just and, listen and, just hey the listen to the man pass, uh, start running hey just listen to the man he says start running bro you don't even have to talk bro, twice I, i'm i'm out that shit. i'm out that bitch Bro, I'd be like, I'd be like those like, cartoons. As soon as he says, like as soon as he says, so you better put it back, puppy. I am out. Like I'm out. I am You're not gonna out. see me. Oh yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys know that uh, those cartoon, uh, those like really old, old like Daffy Duck uh, cartoons where it's just, it's just him. Then a second later, it's a poof of smoke shaped like him. Right. Yeah, right. Me. Right. It's me. It's like now nah, I'm out. Man. I ain't dealing with that. <laughs> Man. And what's worse is that. If there's any doubt if there's any doubt that it's actually William talking and like we we don't know when this takes place like we know like as soon as he says when you better put it back Michael like we see Springtrap gradually appear and that's just wow that, that's yeah. just the like, amount of like foreshadowing there is in that scene is just crazy I be quaking crazy. in my boots <laughs> for those of you who don't know uh somehow yeah 
after he killed the kids, the souls of the innocent, quite literally, forced William into one of his spring lock suits after he revisited the location, and it eventually killed him, creating the abomination we know today as Springtrap. And yeah, basically, we get into this fucking, yeah, we get into the finale, titled finale, and all this antipis, antip oh, fuck, anticipation built up. Like, we know that William is coming for Michael, and something's about to happen, like, oh shit, like, everything's been revealed, what's gonna happen now? And so, we have the masterpiece that is finale. We had some loose ends to tie up in the season one finale where Charlie was seemingly giving instructions to follow to Michael and he still has some unfinished business. So we're, we have to see what happens now. So the tape begins with dates and audio recordings from William Afton. I'm not going to narrate all of them, but I'm going to give the descriptions. March 24th, 1993, the year FNAF 1 takes place, presumably. And then William Afton moans that the locks on his spring lock suit snapped while he was wearing it. He says it hurts for him to get up, that he doesn't know how long he'll be stuck in the suit. He's barely alive in the suit at that point. Next recording, five days later, the 29th. William is surprised to hear that they, presumably the animatronics, the kids, are still alive and moving, as someone had to put them back together. In FNAF 3, he went to the place and dismantled the suits, releasing the kids and unintentionally causing his downfall. But yeah, we see this and then uh, William, he assumes that the pizzeria was closed. He wonders if the people outside still think he's dead or they just hate him and they're just leaving him there. Obviously. An outside, like, fast bear entertainment representative is not going to keep up with this whole lore because only William and his family know about what he did. So, an outsider would just randomly see the suit, the decommissioned springlock suit, probably not notice that there's a man inside, but who knows, or just keep quiet about it and maybe that's why they put the safe room so that people didn't find the animatronic or the springlock suit, William. And yeah, next entry on the list is a couple of months later. By this point, William's voice is very growly and deeper. That usually happens with people who have no energy whatsoever and or their like energy is seeping out from within them and they can they lose the ability to speak afterwards. But yeah, he's his voice is really gravelly and deep like mine right now, but more groggy and then William in this entry bets that they, presumably the spirits, are wondering why they are not in heaven yet. He spits out that God doesn't care about justice. Obviously mad that he's still in the suit, and that he hopes that God is treating Joseph better than him. He's feeling compassion for one of his unintentional victims, Joseph, the crying child. A couple of months pass by, and... This is another one of the meme entries. Like he gets desperate and he starts November 12, 1993. He starts like going, Michael, Michael don't leave me. Michael, 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 That's that's just an iconic meme at this that's point. Just another gem. And presumably, just another gem. and presumably that is Springtrap's point of view when the other video, the expl like the mm -hmm. the company PSA video where he calls for Michael to like release him from the room. That is potentially his own point of view as it happens. And that's pretty cool to see. The next entry is the very next day of William wondering how Michael could have betrayed his own father and how he promises to torture and murder him. Basically, him settling on his idea of ending Michael once he sees him. William 
it, and then we jump to nine years later, oh, June Lord. 5th, 2002. <laughs> Time William skip. curses himself for being stuck and alone. He's desperate at that point. He hasn't seen anyone in nine years. <laughs> and the next entry is six years later, October 6, 2008. And William celebrates. He has renowned hope after someone moves him to a new room. Someone opened up the room and he moved them there. Like people probably setting up shop for Fast Bear's Fright. And he tells Michael to visit him because he's like, boom, he, he's like, he, he's alive. And at this point, he's been rotting in the suit for 15 years. So, yeah, he's probably devolved into the amalgamation that we know as Springtrap. The sentient being of just suit and guy with probably a slight mix of remnant, but we don't know. And... This moment caught up, like caught me off guard, but as he as he says this, like telling Michael to visit him, it cuts to like a black and white image of just Springtrap's still face. And caught it caught right. me off guard. And then he says, right. I see you. I see in that tone. You. And it just caught us so off guard. I was watching this with Trivia and we, we yeah. lost it. We did. <laughs> oh he sees us? Oh god, oh what do you see? Like, you see, so I was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> no, what do you see? Oh. I don't know. So what you're what do you see, for, bro? What you're looking for, boy? What you're looking for? It's kind of, it's kind of sus. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I was like, man, this guy's crazy. Freddy! Michael! Please, Michael! Michael! <laughs> All right, so <laughs> now have the final bit after Springtrap says this now in Fast Bear in Fast Bear's fight fr- fuck now in Fast Bear's fright and text appears on the screen like the screen right now is just like a hollowed out like angle of a guy staring onto a, a camera like a guy staring onto the hall and yeah from w- what we could see this is the hall in front of the office in the FNAF free location. And yeah, it cuts this hall, this angle, and it says, presumably the puppet, he screams. I mean, he shows in the text, he's close. Keep your match alight. Be ready, Michael. It's presumably the puppet talking. And we hear footsteps approaching gradually. And we see Springtrap. We vaguely see him at the other end of the hall. His eyes, his eyes light up, and he says, "Hello," like, like in a more gravelly tone. "Hello," and this is just one of the most probably just as serving scenes in any form of content because it lights up. The screen lights up completely. And it cuts to this glitchy moment of Springtrap, like bones, remains, like just screaming, distorted screaming. The screens flare up. We see a distorted image of the Afton mugshot, his face red, completely angry, fading away. And then it cuts to black. He burnt down the place. He ended it all. He freed the kids. The screen fades to white. And we see the names of the kids finally set free from me stuck in the suits. We see the timestamps of the deaths. Nicole Morales, 1972 to 1985. She was 13. Lucas and Angie Collins. Lucas, 1985 to 85. And Angie, 1979 to 85. Presumably, Angie was Chica because they had that dialogue in it.
Uh, Pancakes, are you there? Ah, uh, my guy, you good? You okay? I like? was pausing for like dramatic we're effect, here. but nah. Are we here. Get my guy. Pancakes. Senor. Senor Pancakes. Oh, nah, he's dead. Uh, I know what. I think he's at. He is knocked out cold. <laughs> God damn, he's on the floor. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we, I, I, I got it. Oh shit, he's alive! Yeah, I got interrupted briefly. Uh, so as I mentioned, presumably Lucas is Bonnie and Angie is Chica because they had that one dialogue. Nicole is probably someone else. And yeah, then we get Benjamin Nelson, 1974 to 85. Probably Foxy. Who knows? And then Charlie Emily, 1973 to 1984. Just the puppet. And the final timestamp, Michael and Joseph Afton, together again, forgiveness and peace, 1969 to 2008 for Michael, and 1974 to 1983 for Joseph. Thus, presumably stating that Michael died in the fires along with his father, and that Joseph was the victim of the bite. And thus, the spirits are freed. The memory of everything that went with this place can finally come to an end. And this beautiful series comes to an end as well. Wow. Wow. Like, honestly, as I, like, this series deserves all its flowers. It's Big truly time. commendable. And, Big hold on, let me just say something. It's 10.30 p.m. currently. Why do I hear a garbage truck in the distance? But yeah, this series a hundred percent deserves all of its flowers. It's just that good. Like it uses it perfectly combines elements from the original source material and the um Anarong horrors like itself to bring this like wow. Honestly, expertly crafted. So what are you guys thoughts on the series overall? I'm happy that the memory of everything can finally rot away. That's mainly it. Yeah. Can finally just be put to rest. Ugh. Can you just and, can uh, you guys stop quoting Henry? Holy shit, that was my thing. <laughs> 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 uh, but uh and honestly this last episode finale was also really good. These last two these last two season two episodes were good. And like finale specifically. And that last sequence where we're just waiting for Afton to appear in order to burn down everything and the text just saying keep your match like he's close and shit now now it makes me feel like I'm there now it makes me feel like I'm waiting for that dude so that I can just burn him the fuck up hmm. and and like the noise you know the, the the sounds in the background and shit it really it really added up to the uh to the buildup and also like the this the ending which felt pretty you know it, it felt really really good and it felt pretty it, it felt, felt pretty complete. like it was meant I, it, yeah. it was meant to be it was meant to be right really really good and uh just gotta say man just talent just just really really talented man the work put into the put into the series was great seriously yeah something and you know and honestly, and, and rewatching it, it always, it always leaves me wanting more. Like, man, like what else could come from this? And considering that there are plenty of other FNAF games, you know, there's still a story to be told. But I feel like, I, I feel like this is good enough. I feel like this is really, really good. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Like you can really see the, the, the quality of this work. Not only that, but this series I said was that inspirational like that impactful it's this spin-off 
inspired multiple spin-offs. As I said, I first watched the Baddington edition of the series, and actually, the guy had to cut the the series in half. Also, after he finished season one, he had to stop making the series because Squimpus McGrimpus, the original creator, asked him to stop. And understandably, understandably, amidst amidst all the drama that the creator was going through at the time it makes sense and then and i just found out that about this as i was looking up the series for the episode i found that another guy made a, a, a spin-off he actually remade the series again but this time using models from the movie the fnaf movie Ooh. 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 that's honestly great and it got me thinking like i haven't seen that edition i only know that he did it because i saw the first episode the, the freddy movie model but it got me thinking we already saw the yellow rabbit in the, in the movie like it, there's a high possibility that in the movie the second edition which is confirmed in a production we're gonna see fred bear there's a high possibility that can happen and if that's the right. case then brother that cinema is going to be packed. That's all I'm saying. Big, big time. I mean, big didn't we already see Fredbear in the iteration of Golden Freddy? I mean, yeah, but in the movie, we never saw Golden Freddy or Fredbear. Yeah, we did. We saw Golden Freddy when um, when he went to take Charlie. That was not that was not Freddy. Uh, you know, when he got into the cab and all that and all that meme. I mean, that yeah, way. we saw we saw Golden Freddy, but we haven't seen Fred yeah, Bear. Yeah. We saw the Yellow Rabbit. Yeah, we, we saw Spring Bunny. A decrepit suit, but we haven't seen Fred Bear in full glory. We saw Golden Freddy abandoned, but we never saw like Fred Bear like in use as is customary in flashbacks. And when that happens in the original, like in, in FNAF in Two movie. flashbacks in the movie. Like, let me just say, that is going to be a highlight because Fredbear as a character just emanates this energy of everything that has happened. The bite, the restaurants, the crisis, all that. Like, it, it all goes back to Fredbear. And, yeah. No, nah, but in the end, man, great, just overall great, and uh, good thing that we're good thing that the that the second Phenom movie is on its way. Uh, it, it, it says it says it's gonna arrive on December of of next year, right? December fifth, twenty twenty five. Yeah. Lord, nah, man. it's gonna be a packed cinema. Big. Time. The hype builds up again. I don't want to see the trailer great. already. I don't want to see the trailer already. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I saw the tapes and the movie tapes that we're talking about, the VHS tapes based on the movie, I'm pretty sure they were made by a guy called, yeah, Valox made them. It's actually pretty recent. He remade oh. the tape with the movie models and it's actually fairly interesting. For the non-existent video, he just used the recolored version of the Freddy model. Red bear. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Honestly, that brings this already long episode to an end. Nonetheless, this episode was really great. We discussed a really great series in a really great context. So, first of all, I want to thank you all for listening and thank you two for partaking because this discussion was just wow spectacular mm -hmm. hey, but yeah, anytime man anytime any yeah. final thoughts no i got nothing mm -hmm. uh yeah i think, I think yeah, yeah i really don't have anything else to, <laughs> to add I, the only yeah. thing i really gotta add is i ain't sleeping tonight that is it <laughs> brother but that's that's not shut the fuck no nah, but <laughs> <laughs> no nah, well i mean that's a, if if i could add something else i mean definitely 
I'm looking forward to making more episodes like this, you know. Same. Talking about things that, you know, we, we found very, very interesting. Hey, hey, I say do. next time we, we should talk about the uh, non canon ones because those have lore too. Right. I don't that'd know. Be relevant yeah, that'd, to be, story, that'd be, uh, that'd be, it, that'd be something. something. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good, uh, that, that'd be a good topic. That'd be a good topic. But, well, hey, we'll see what happens. But, we'll see what happens. Uh, nonetheless, that has been all for this discussion. As always, my channel is Pancakes releasing music soon so check it out uh anything y'all want to plug nope uh nope <laughs> now we All broke right. so as the tape said tomorrow is another day for another <laughs> episode so thank you all for watching and we will see you all in the next one goodbye and communication Bye.